Hey guys, welcome back. Today we will be learning how to create your own Flux AI selfie machine to generate realistic imagery of yourself in any style. So without further ado, let's get right into it. So before we get started, just to share a bit about myself, my name is Cal from Dynami AI and my goal is to explore and share practical AI automation use cases and workflows that we can build today to get ahead in the AI race. So what we're going to build today, right? Today we're going to learn how to build our own AI model that allows us to create selfies, thumbnails and images of yourself using AI. You can see from these images over here, I've managed to transform myself into many different images such as being a wizard, older wizard, an even older wizard or even I myself together with Datepool. Super cool, and you can use this for many different purposes in your own specific use cases. All right, and so how does this AI selfie generator machine works, right? First, we use 10 to 15 images of ourselves. We will use that to train our AI model on Replicate, right? Afterwards, once we have created our AI model, we then create a simple and powerful Chrome extension interface that allows us to type in our prompts and trigger the AI automation. So almost like our own AI image generator chatbot, but you can do it anywhere on the web page in any single browser. Following that, last but not least, we will create a simple automation on Make and Airtable to help us approve and download these images to our G Drive at ease. So how can you leverage this specific workflow, right? If you're watching this video, I believe you fall into either one of these two categories. One is a business owner or a creator. And if you fall into this category, you can use this workflow to create your own effective thumbnails, LinkedIn shots, or more customizations for your outreach, right? Like creating AI images of yourself with the company's name to create an interesting outreach message for your client. So the sky is really the limit here. And there are many things that you can do with this specific AI model. Now, of course, if you fall into the other category as an AI enthusiast or an agency, you can also build these workflows for businesses and creators and you can create creative AI generated businesses such as creating LinkedIn photo shots for people and so on. So do stay tuned to the end to figure out how you can do so. So I know all of this sounds super exciting so without further ado let's get into our next step to train our model on Replicate. So first you need to go into replicate.com and create your own account and once you have done so I want you to go to this page under Luca Taco AI Toolkit. So Luca Taco is one of the developers on Replicate and he has created this AI toolkit that allows us to create our own specific AI models based on the image that we provided. So why do we use Replicate to create our model, right? So typically it requires a lot of GPU power to actually train our model in-house. So doing it on Replicate allows us to run it on cloud where we can actually leverage the power of NVIDIA A100 80GB GPU hardware to allow us to create our model and we just have to pay it a small fee, $0.0014 per second to create our model. So this is super effective and super cost efficient for us to create powerful models in our own specific use cases. So once you have created an account and you're at this page, first thing you need to do is to select a model, right? So if you're new here, you would not have anything, but let's say if I have, I will create a model called It's a Cal. Right, so this model name itself is something that I want to use to name my character and I'll call my own character It's a Cal for the AI to actually take reference later on. Following that, you need to upload a minimum of 12 to 15 images for the AI to understand what you want to train it on. So over here, I've created a folder of about 20 images of myself. As you can see, different images of myself in different shirts and different poses. So you just have to create about 20 images, which I find it actually useful. And once you have that, you want to make sure to name it I name it a underscore photo of underscore is a cow as this is what I want to call reference later on in my model. So for example, if let's say I want to have myself in a wizard pose later, my prompt would be it's a cow as a wizard. Okay. And once this is done, you want to select all of them, right? And you want to compress them. So you just right click and click compress. And once you click compress, you will get this archive.zip file, which we will use to upload into replicate right away. Okay, so moving back to Replicate, once we have that, we're going to search for our file. I'm going to drag it over archive.zip. Okay, now once this is done, we're going to keep the rest of the information the same. So the model name, we just keep it as the latest model, which is the Black Forest Lab Flux 1 Dev. Right, and the Hugging Face Token. Right, so this is super important for us to assess the model later on. Right, so what we got to do is to go into Hugging Face and create an account. And once you're done, you're going to go into Settings. And from here, you want to click into access token. You want to create a new token and you're going to give it a token name. And I have already created one previously, as you can see, called It's a Cow. But let's say we're creating a new one. We can create a new token. You call it It's a Cow or whatever name you want to call it. And you want to give it all the permissions over here. Okay, make calls to the server API. You want to give it web hooks access as well, collection access. And of course, we don't need to give it discussion and poses access or billing access as well and the rest we can leave it as it is and we're going to click create token okay and once you have clicked create token 
right? You will have a token over here, as you can see. And all you gotta do is to make sure to copy the value of the token and paste it over at HF token over here, okay? Once this is done, we're gonna move on to the next step. You're gonna keep the rest of them the same, the steps the same, the learning rate the same, the batch size the same, resolution the same, everything else here the same. And last but not least, we need to create a hugging face repo ID, right? So moving back to hugging face, this is where you need to create a model for us to use later on. And so we're gonna go into our profile and we're gonna create a new model. We're gonna call it it's a cow and we're gonna keep the rest the same. And once you have that, you're gonna copy this and you're gonna paste it over back at repo ID. This is where our model files will be trained onto in Hugging Face later on, okay? And once this is done, you're gonna click Create Training and it should take you about 30 minutes to get it running and done. So I've already created a model, so I'll use that as an example instead. But once that is done, right, moving back to Hugging Face, you should see it completed and you should have an update to the model itself. You can see over here, all the files and versions should be uploaded. As you can see, the files such as Flux, train, replicate, save. All these files should be uploaded and this actually shows that the model is actually working. So over here, you have actually created your own AI model. So once you have that, we're going to go into another page called Flux Dev Laura. You can find this by clicking onto Lukataku and you can look for its Flux Dev Laura tool. Okay, and once you have this, this is where you can actually prompt and recreate your own images. So super fast, super effective. So for example, you have created a model and we call it, it's a cow, right? So we can type in a prompt, it's a cow as a wizard. Okay. And we can keep the aspect ratio as one is to one, everything else the same. And all we gotta do is to change the edge flora here, over here to our hugging face model, which is Mr. Danami slash it's a cow dash Laura, as you can see over here that I've created. And I'm gonna make sure to keep it public so that I can use it. Okay, once this is done, we're gonna click run once and see what happens, okay? You can see over here, it is running perfectly, super cool. All right, as you can see, it's me over here as a wizard, pretty cool. And you can use this for many different use cases. For example, you can say wearing a Superman suit and let's see what we get. Brilliant, you can see over here, it's me wearing a Superman suit as well. So super cool, it's one of the more realistic model that I've seen up to date so far. And I haven't even optimized the prompts yet. So imagine what we can do with it if we actually improve the prompts as well as use it for different customized use cases. So now that we have this, I just wanna make it even better for this automation process, right? We don't wanna be coming back to this page all the time to be generating our images. And we also wanna be able to create a system where we can vet through all the images that we like or do not like and have it uploaded directly to our Google Drive. And this is where Make Automation comes in to give you a little boost to what we can build later on. So after we have created a model, the next thing you wanna do is to create a simple Chrome extension first, right? So the first thing you wanna do is to go back into our Make platform and create a new scenario, okay? And we're gonna call this Flux Selfie Generator Machine 1 out of 2. First module that we're gonna create is a webhook and we're gonna have a custom webhook to be able to pull in the information. We're gonna call this webhook selfie generator webhook. Okay, and click save. And from here we will have the webhook link, which we'll copy later on for our Chrome extension. Okay, so here's a simple thing that I wanna to do to help myself improve the process. For example, I don't wanna be going to replicate all the time to generate my images, and I wanna have the inspiration anytime when I'm online, right? So what I've done is I've created a simple web extension that you guys can use, link in the description below to get access to all my resources. I'm gonna upload this extension and show you how it works. But before we do, we wanna change the webhook link to our automation. I'm gonna open up background.js and I'm gonna open it with a text edit. Okay, I'm gonna find the webhook link Right, and I'm just gonna change it to the specific one that we have just copied. And I'm gonna save this, close. Okay, I'm gonna go back to our Chrome extension. We're gonna go into extensions, manage extensions, turn on developer mode, and I'm gonna load unpack. I'm gonna find my prompt typer, okay? And I'm just going to unload it. Awesome. Once we have this, right, we're just gonna look at the details, okay, and we're gonna pin it to toolbar, 
right? You can see over here, if I click onto it, I do have a simple prompt typer over here that I can type in my prompt and it will send automatically into make. So for example, we can type it to Cal as Superman, send prompt. And you can see over here is pass the prompt over with the aspect ratio. Very cool. And you can see this is where this information can later on be translated into our model for us to generate our images at ease without having to go to replicate platform. Okay, once this is done, we can click save and we're going to continue the rest of the workflow. Okay, so once we have this, the next thing I want to do is to optimize my prompts, right? One of the things that help us generate better images is to have better prompts and we don't have the time to be typing out long and lengthy prompts as well. I'm going to create a module with Claude this time for you to improve the prompt that I've just sent it to the web. So we're going to search for Entropic Claude. We're going to create a prompt, right? And from here, we're going to give it max token 4000. Okay, and we're going to add a message. And we're going to call this role user. And we're going to add content. And from here, we're going to key in as text content. And we're going to add in the prompt over here. So I'm just going to copy over the prompt that I've created, but you can get it in my resources below as well. So you can see over here, I've given it a set of prompts, such as telling it to use the prompt given to optimize them of higher quality, where the subject of the prompt will always be it's a cow. That's what we use to create our images. Make sure to mention what camera angle to be used. And also, one key point to note in this prompt itself is that with this newly written prompt, the output must be in the following JSON format only. I can see over here, I've actually created a specific JSON format, and this is what is required to get our prompt sent over to replicate later on to generate our images, right? So I've given it a version, I've given it the input, I've also given it a HF LoRa, which is Mr. Dynamy slash It's a Cow dash LoRa. As you can see over here, it actually mimics what we have done earlier on replicate when we use the model so that we can actually get it to run what we want from make platform itself. As you can see from that webhook, we have actually gotten the aspect ratio as well. So we can actually key it in into our prompt. And then from here, the output format, we want to keep it the same, guidance scale, output quality, and all that stuff. From here, we also make sure to add in some additional prompts, some additional information, such as to not include any explanation or additional text outside of the JSON structure to ensure that it stays within what we want. And once this is done, we also provide it with the final information telling it that the initial prompt is the prompt over here. So it knows what to optimize later on. Okay, once this is done, we're just gonna change the name of this entropic clot. Right, we're gonna rename this to our prompt optimizer. Amazing. And we're gonna click save. And let's run once again and see what we get. Okay. Same thing here, we're gonna give it a prompt. So we're gonna call it it's a cow as Superman. Send prompt and let's see what happens. And you can see over here, Claude is thinking, amazing. So you can see over here, firstly, we've gotten a prompt as it's a cow as Superman, the aspect ratio is 69. And you can see over here now in the output, it has actually provided us with the prompt output, the version, the input, and you can see it's actually improved the prompt Right? Instead of saying it's a cow as Superman, it's improved it to high quality portrait of it's a cow as Superman, wearing the iconic blue suit with red cap and the S emblem, right? Medium shot, front facing camera angle, heroic pose with arm cross, standing against a cityscape backdrop, dramatic lighting emphasizing facial features and costume details, as well as the other information required. So super cool, and our prompt is actually improved for better quality output later on. This is super useful. And once we have this, the next thing we want to do is to connect it to our Flux model. So what we're going to do next is to add in a HTTP module. Okay, we're going to make a request over here. And we're going to type in the URL. Right, the URL will be api.replicate.com slash v1 predictions. The method, we're going to change it to posts. And we're going to add in the header. And the first header is called authorization. And this is where we're going to add in the value, which is our API token earlier on. So if you go to replicate and you go into your dashboard, you go into API tokens, you will have a token over here to connect to make platform. So I've created one over here and I'm going to paste it here, right? And I'm going to type in the word bearer in front of it. So I'm going to put bearer and the API token. Okay. Once this is done, we're going to click onto body type. We're going to click raw content type JSON and request content will be the text response, right? This is the prompt that we have created earlier on to be run through our Flux model later on. And we want to pass response, click yes, okay. 
click save and from here we want to run it once again so we're going to click run once to see what we get same thing here we're going to type in our prompt it's a cow as superman send prompt and let's see what happens okay you can see it has run perfectly right the status code 210 has run perfectly so we can go back to replicate and let's see if our image is generated you can see over here it's running right over here the id is running click into it okay you can see over here it's running perfectly and you can see it's created an image of myself as superman super interesting super cool and it works perfectly right connected from our make platform so once we have this done we want to continue the workflow as well right we don't just want to be able to prompt it anywhere on the internet i thought it would be nice if i can consolidate all my images generated into an air table and then be able to verify them later on and send them directly to my google drive without having to access replicate at all we're going to go back to our make automation and from here we're just going to complete this workflow before we get into the air table right next thing we're going to do is to add in a sleep module Okay, this is to ensure that we have enough time for the model to be generated before we go into the next step of the workflow. So I give it about 80 seconds just to be safe, but you can give it higher or lower if it doesn't work as well. Okay, once this is done, we're gonna create another HTTP module. And this time we wanna make a request again. And for URL, we're gonna click into the previous HTTP module. We're gonna click get, okay. Same thing here, we're gonna add in the authorization as the name. The value would be our API key earlier on. Okay, and we're gonna add in the item type. Item two, we're gonna add in item two, which is content dash type. And we're gonna call it the value application slash JSON. All right, and we're gonna move down to body type, raw content type, JSON. And we're gonna pass content, yes. Okay, done. And we're going to just run it one last time before we add the Airtable module. So I'm going to click run once again. Same thing here. Add it in your prompt. It's a cow as date pool. All right. This time a different one. And we're just going to get it running so it gets processed perfectly before we can move on to the next step. This is to ensure that Make is able to get the URL link of our image generated so that we can pass it to Airtable and download it later on and upload to our Google Drive. Okay, perfect. Once this is done, you're gonna make sure that the data output over here has the link, right? So you can see over here, it does have the image link. So this will be perfect for us to upload to Airtable. Right now, the next thing we're gonna do is to go into Airtable.com, okay? Make sure you have created an account. You can also use Google Sheets if you want, but I love Airtable because it's super slick for me to consolidate my information and there are many different features that we can do with it. Okay, once you're here, you're gonna create a new table. And so I've created one called AI Selfie Generator. And I just need a couple of fields over here. The first one I want to create is the prompt. So this is a single line text, right? And the next field I want to create is image URL, which is also a single line text status for us to approve or disapprove the content that we have seen later on. Last modified time under last modified time and created time as created time, right? So these two would be important for us to trigger our automation later on. Once we have this, make sure that we are connected to make by clicking into integrations, third party integrations, make, and make sure that it is able to be connected to make as well. Okay, once this is done, we're gonna go back to make. And from here, we're gonna add in the Airtable module and we're gonna search create a rec. We're gonna add the base to our AI selfie generator. The table will be table one. We're gonna start linking up the information that we have gotten from this automation. Right, so the first thing we're gonna add in is the prompt, which is our initial prompt, right? We wanna add in the image URL, which is from the latest module under output URL, output one, okay? And the status, we'll keep it empty, right? And that's all we need. We're gonna click okay, and we are done. Click save, and we're just gonna run this once again. And so let's go back to the first one, which is it's a cow wearing a Superman suit. Send prompt, and let's see what happens. Okay, and once this is done, we can go back to our air table. You can see over here, there is the prompt, there is the image URL, and we can click into it and we can see, well, it's myself in a Superman suit. So super cool. And we're done with this first part of the automation. Make sure to click save. And once we're done with this, the next thing we wanna do is to be able to then approve it on air table and have it downloaded directly to our Google Drive, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna create another scenario and I'm gonna call this new scenario Flux Selfie Generator machine two out of two 
Okay, in this new scenario, we're going to first add in a new module under Add Table. We're going to click Watch Records and we're going to search for our AI selfie generator base, Table 1, and the trigger field will be Last Modified Time. And the labeled field will be Status. Okay, and we're going to click the rest as the same and click OK. From now on, OK, done. So we're going to add in HTTP Get a File. Right, and what we want to do here is we want to download the image file from the image URL. So we're going to click image URL and click OK. So this allows us to download the image file and upload it to Google Drive later on. Okay, from here we want to make sure to add a filter as well and this is called the approved filter. So the condition is the status, right? Contains case insensitive and you want to have the word approved before we actually approve the content. Okay, once this is done, we're just going to add in one last module, which is the Google Drive module. So we're going to search for Google Drive, upload a file. We're going to click select from the list, and I'm going to choose the folder that I want to upload my file into. Right, and so I'm going to click into content ideas. Okay, and make sure to connect it to the folder that you want to upload your file into. And from here, I'm going to click show advanced setting, and I'm going to change the new file name to the initial prompt that we have. So I can organize it in that specific manner. And the file is the HTTP get a file and then that's it. Okay, we're going to click OK and we're going to click Save. Okay, once this is done, we're going to go back to Add Table. And let's say we love this image that we have just generated. We're just going to change the status to Approved. And once it's Approved, I'm just going to go back to Make. And I'm going to click Run once. And alright, once it's done, you can see over here in my Google Drive, it has uploaded the file. Right, it's a cow wearing a Superman suit and you can see it's uploaded directly to our Google Drive. So all in all, I hope you gained something valuable here. Right, so besides just creating a model on Replicate, we can actually use Make Platform to further optimize the system for us. And in this simple example, what I wanted to do from the start to the end was to Firstly, be able to prompt it from anywhere I want on the internet by creating a simple Chrome extension. And from there, I connect it all the way to my Airtable for me to consolidate all my generated images without having to go back to replicate. And once that is done, I'm able to then approve them and download them directly into my Google Drive for me to use specifically. This can be super useful for me to be creating thumbnails, images in any specific manner that I want. So this is one of the many powerful automations that you can do by creating your own AI model on Flux and connecting it through the Make Automation platform. And so once again, thanks for staying till the end. I hope you found this useful. If you'd like to learn other automation tutorials like this, do give it a like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.